did Blue feel when the kids didn't want to play? Sad. Sad. He was really upset about it. So he tried to build a tree house. Mm hmm What? Two play. So he tried to build a tree house. And then what happened at the they end? They wanted to play with them. They played where? In the tree house. They played oh. in the tree house at the end. Are Finally. They played in the tree house. Or could, what would you, well, should we say they played in the tree house with Blue? Or could we I say they it. played with him? Yeah. In they the played with Blue? Finally, they played with Blue? No, I didn't play with Blue. It was they up. played with Blue. All right. I think visible learning in the kindergarten classroom um, means that the students are independently learning or they're learning um, together. I view myself as the facilitator of instruction, so I'm not there dictating exactly what they're learning, that a lot of their learning is through exploration or with talking with one another or independently practicing what I put out in front of them. And that's the visible learning there, that they're doing it themselves, not me giving it to them. They are showing their learning um, by themselves and being independent learners. And I think uh, what's so important is that that can happen when they're five. Sometimes we're afraid to let those little ones go and um, show what they know. And they certainly can do that independent learning. And especially when given the structure of the Daily Five. Hey, what'd you learn about today? Mm -hmm. uh, we learned bells can make hi, um, um, uh, they can say their names. Yeah. What do you mean vowels can say their names? Seriously? Yes, seriously. Long vowels. Um, say, say their names and short vowels say their like sounds like a, e, a, uh, uh, and uh, uh. Oh, cool. Very cool. Hey. What's your favorite station in the Daily Five? Listen to reading. Yeah, why is listen to reading your favorite? Because we get to look on iPads. Yeah, because you get to use the iPads? Yeah. What about the iPads makes it your favorite? Like, why do you like to do that? Because we get to watch, like, stories that actually move. Oh, okay. So, the last time we did that review, we gave you that little feedback survey. We took everything you guys said. You liked the chunking, you liked working with Miss P, you liked the highlighting. So we're going to continue to do those three things today, okay? So there's going to be three groups. So we'll just leave these up here for you so you kind of know your rotation. And they're at the bottom of each page, okay? Amy and I, we construct videos together. And we will do the direct, explicit instruction through our videos. So sometimes it's us writing on the paper, sometimes it's us doing a PowerPoint, um, but it's always us explaining everything step by step by step of what they need to know for that skill, whatever it might be. And so that's what they're watching at home, they're completing the notes, and then we ask them a series of questions throughout the video so that when they're coming in the next day, um, we can then gauge what we need to do for class that day. So now when they come in, there's four questions. So we know that they got a one out of four, we got to spend a little bit extra time with that student or the whole group really got like twos and threes. So, all right, we're going to do a little more direct instruction today, a little less group work so we can kind of gauge how we're going to present our lesson to them based on how they did on those questions. So they want exact. So just make them. That would be to the nearest whole number. So what would exact look like? Uh, would it be um, 40? What are they standing in for? Like A, B, C, the legs, which means they're what letters? Uh, B and C. I mean, A and B. A and B, which makes this guy what? C. C. Oh, okay. Can you go from there? Yeah. Yes? Okay. One of the things that we are really trying to hope for here is collaboration and the kids working together, the kids helping each other, using math language. And I think with the atmosphere that Pam and I have created and them sitting with their peers, if you walk around this room, you can see kids talking math and helping each other with math. And they're so comfortable with who they're sitting with, they're not afraid to ask for those things. So, I mean, right off the bat, that group work and them helping each other is visible learning immediately. It's awesome. Well, for us to hear them explaining it and teaching it to other kids, lets us know they really know what they're doing now because yeah. if you're able to teach it that means that you really know it so that's good cool for us to see. Normally in a normal class there's just like the set ideal learner that sits there and listens to the teacher and just immediately understands the notes and stuff and I'm kind of like the total opposite of that <laughs> so this class really helped because I could review over and over and then the night before if I didn't understand something in the video I could rewatch it so that was really helpful to me. Understand things better. Like I have always struggled in math. I'm, I just moved here, so there's 
I was always struggling, but now I'm like excited to go to math class because in, cause instead of just like listening to people, it's like hands on, which is a lot easier for me. Here's the deal. At the end of class, creative writing projects are due, turned in on classroom if possible. Your documentaries will be uploaded to YouTube, turned in on classroom so that I can actually watch them. And then you're gonna work on your reflection for the rest of class if you have that time. I'm the kind of teacher who doesn't spend a lot of time teaching um, in front of the room. It's a lot more facilitation and they do a lot of the work themselves and they don't realize it. I'll get up there and get them started or I'll answer questions, but a lot of what I do is just walk around and help facilitate their learning as best I can. I would try to recapture that footage because I would hate for you to have a documentary where you don't include his perspective. Yeah, where you don't include his perspective too because he really had interesting things to say, it sounded like. I try to like add some funniness in there. Like it's kind of difficult. Yeah, obviously. no, it's good because it's kind of like. It, yeah. I think what you need, if you just have relentless sadness and you don't have like the other funny, side, yeah. you don't see how sad the sadness is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like you need yeah, both? Yeah, you need like a little bit of something. Exactly, in order to yeah. get the balance yeah. that you get. If you see, I believe so the common idea, ultimately, really is this idea that we've been thinking about all year, which is what is true learning? What does it mean to really be an education and they were all year kind of thinking about this sometimes without realizing that they were thinking about this so at the beginning of the year when I asked them what does learning look like and they gave me all these beautiful answers and I asked them what does school look like and they gave me all these negative answers all year we've been talking about how we bridge the gap between those two things and this is the moment where they come back to the beginning of the year and all the things we've talked about, collaboration, creativity, student choice, doing things in an interesting and unusual way, but doing it on their own, that's where they are now. She just explains the gist of everything, and she really wants you to go in your own direction. It really allows you to release like, your inner work and show you how far you can go by yourself without any other help. And like, she's always there if you need her, but most of the time you don't even feel like you do. Education has shifted drastically in the last decade or so. Um, so in the past you would have classrooms that, you know, the teacher was kind of the, the owner of all knowledge and students just sat and received the information they needed. Today, instead of having that, students are taking ownership of the learning. They have choice in what they're, they're learning, how they're learning. And part of that requires them to be able to collaborate and problem solve. You know, there's flexibility in the physical space, so you know, maybe they can't sit at a desk all day. Instead, they're better if they're standing, or some of them like to sit on the floor. So, you know, giving them that flexibility in the space and giving teachers flexibility with how they're teaching um, so that they can make sure that they're meeting the needs of all of the students.